You've probably heard of the Dominican Republic, but do you know who it's named after? Stay tuned to find out. Hello friends, Pastor Tim Westermeyer here. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. I have in my hand um, the current hymnal that we use at um, St. Philip Deacon. Uh, it's the hymnal of the Lutheran Church called Evangelical Lutheran Worship. As you might imagine, most of the hymnal is taken up with, surprise, hymns. However, if you look in the front of this hymnal, I, I don't assume most of you have this, uh, but in the front of the hymn, there's a, a page that says calendar, which is sort of the main calendar of the church here. And then uh, three or four pages, I guess one, two, three pages, called Lesser Festivals and Commemorations, which is basically uh, festivals commemorating individual Christians who have lived. So on this page, or these pages, for example, are people like Martin Luther King, Martin Luther himself, uh, John Donne, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a martyr from World War II, Julian of Norwich, a sort of mystic and poet, Seattle, uh, the chief of the Duwamish Confederacy here in, in the uh, United States, um, Johann Sebastian Bach, about whom I said something a couple episodes ago, Florence Nightingale, uh, Francis of Assisi, and a bunch of others. Um, and again, I, I'm in a tradition, the Lutheran tradition doesn't have saints exactly, but I lift this up as a reminder that we do honor and remember people who have lived before us. And I personally, I'm a big fan of history, and I actually think we can learn a lot about our own faith and current times and our own call uh, to be Christians in the world today by studying the lives of people who've gone before us. And it turns out that tomorrow, the day after this episode airs, um, August 8th, is the festival celebrating someone named uh, Dominic, who you maybe haven't heard of. He lived at about the same time as Francis of Assisi, who I'm sure you have heard of. And uh, Assisi established something called the Franciscan Order. And Dominic, who is from Spain, established something that still exists today called the Dominican Order. And um, I'm not going to go into great detail about his life. Uh, you're welcome to look it up uh, and learn more about him. I would say just a few things. One, as a young man, he was, he was actually, like Francis, very generous. He did have some possessions. He sold them to help the poor. He ended up being ordained as a priest. And he recognized after a trip that there was some contention in the countries he was traveling through and some existing orders of preachers. I shouldn't say that because actually the Dominicans are known as the orders of preachers. So if the Dominicans have their name and then comma OP. But other preachers, I should just say at the time, were trying to convert folks or challenge them about some heresies. And Dominic observed this and he realized they're not being successful. And his view was they weren't being successful because their own lives uh, weren't uh, congruent with the message they were sharing, I guess. And so Dominic, taking that as sort of a uh, starting point, realized maybe we need to do this a little different. Maybe we need to reform uh, how we're approaching this or do it in a different way. And so uh, he saw a need and he took a risk and he ended up uh, finding a house. Someone ended up putting up some money to house him and only six other people, which started the Dominican order. Um, and he died in, let's see, what was it? Uh, where did I write this down? He died at 51 in 1226, which was just a year before perhaps one of the most famous Dominicans of all time, St. Thomas Aquinas, was born. And so, uh, in this episode, I just want to lift him up. He's someone we're not very familiar with, but what I want to suggest is, like all Christians who have ever lived, uh, Dominic was invited by God to respond to a particular need, and he did, and he ended up changing the world. Interesting fact about him, by the way, and by the way, if, I, if you think I'm wrong about this, please comment below, uh, but my understanding is that he is the only person who has, has not a, a single, but has two sovereign nations named after him, the Dominican Republic and another island named Dominica, uh, which is an interesting fact. 
I'm not suggesting that if you follow God's will in your life, you're going to have a nation named after you. That's not the point. And as I said in an earlier episode, one of the things we learn from the lives of people who've gone before us, uh, sometimes called the saints, is that they are radically different from one another. And they responded to God in particular ways that were specific to their own time and place. And I guess what I want to suggest to you today, as we look at the life briefly of Dominic, is to ask the question, how is God calling you here and now? What needs do you see around you today that you particularly can respond to to help bring God's hope and healing and love to the world that is in such need for all of those things? I invite you to reflect on those and we'll see you next time. Until then, be well, stay in touch, and God bless. 